as much as I loved Dune Part 2 and as much of a religious experience as it was for me, boy was Raban's death scene stupid or what? To me, it was on the level of Game of Thrones Season 8 stupid, and here's why. Imagine you're fighting a war. You're being swarmed by thousands of enemies. It's complete chaos everywhere. People are dying. Stuff is exploding. Everyone's running around and trying to flee. And all of this is happening in a big desert city. What would you imagine is the chance of you, while fighting in this chaotic giant fucking battle and trying to escape, what would be the chance of you actually meeting your arch enemy, who wants to specifically kill you as vengeance for you killing his own people? What would be the chance of the two of you, tiny little people in between this giant battle, actually meeting so that you can fight it off and complete this poetic little circle of revenge? And yeah. Realistically speaking, the chance is practically close to zero. And that Gurney Halleck managed to find Raban and kill him? That was as stupid as Jaime Lannister somehow meeting Euron Greyjoy on the cliffs of King's Landing after one of them has been wandering the streets of the city for like an hour, and the other one has just physically swam across all of this distance from his burning fleet. The two of them meeting in this one in a million chance of managing to reach the same point at the shore at the exact same time so that they can poetically fight it off and complete the circle. In real life, this would be just insane. I bet it has happened somewhere, sometime, but it's far from a frequent occurrence. This is just wishful luck. And in the real world, especially in the chaos of war, it's just not something that happens. And when you do it in fiction, it just renders the fiction unrealistic. And this is an advantage for the book over the film, because I don't remember this happening to Raban in the novel. I don't even remember specifics of how he died. I think he was just swarmed and killed by the Fremen or something, which is the outcome that sounds perfectly natural. But no, they wanted this bit of poetry in the film because it's like poetry, it rhymes. And it's not that I mind the poetry this much. If you want to do it, fine, go ahead and do it. But please don't make it look stupid because that's exactly how it looked in Raban's case. The two of them finally meet, which makes you get a bit pumped for this epic face-off. And it also finally looks like he's about to show his skill with this seemingly special weapon of choice, a fucking whip of all things. But no, he whips it out and a second later Gurney just stabs him and he dies. And that's it. Ugh. I know it was a long movie and they just didn't want to stretch it out with more stuff, but you could have done it at least a little bit better than this. And it's not to say that his death in the book was spectacular or something, there it was just realistic. If they wanted to play around with it, they could have made it more exciting in a psychological kind of way. For example, I'm thinking of a similar situation in ancient Rome with the Emperor Tiberius and his prefect of the Praetorian Guard, Ilius Janus. He was basically like his right hand and personal cutthroat officer who did all this dirty work. Because Tiberius was a shitty person and a paranoid monarch. The people generally disliked him and were starting to be restless. So Tiberius, for one reason or the other, decided to basically make Sejanus his scapegoat and blamed him for everything that was going on. So he publicly condemned him and the army and the people basically tore him to pieces. Him and his entire family. And they were especially cruel to his children, which I don't want to go into details on this because it's really gruesome. But if anyone's interested, it was really well depicted in the series I, Claudius, which please watch it and read the book. They're amazing. Anyway, my point is, if they wanted to be creative with Raban, they could have done it in a similar way, because he was basically the Sejanus of the Harkonnens. They just used him as a scapegoat so that Fate Rotha can get the people's approval to inherit. But no, instead they made him die in like two seconds, just after having taken out his scary stupid whip, and at the hands of the last freaking person that you would expect him to meet during the battle. I'm out, see you in the next one.